Hey Jules Bless Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new I know you can benefit. Yes I'm using a tripod. I don't, I'm not going to say this will be the norm but because I want to use my hands to teach you something I'm using a tripod. <laughs> you can chime in on whether this works for you or not. My face is farther back. I shouldn't be scaring anybody, but I kind of like to scare people. So, you know, whatever. Can't be Halloween all year. All right. So anyway, I wanted to teach you a really cool way to easily remember the Ten Commandments in order. <laughs> this is like brand new to me because I certainly try and live by the Ten Commandments. Um, but I usually have to like think it out, talk it out, you know, and this was a fantastic way, kid friendly and the kid and every adult on how to memorize the Ten Commandments in order. And of course, I'm going to touch on our Advent Random Acts of Kindness Challenge. So let's start with the commandments first. I'm going to give a little talk on the commandments. And as always, I will include this in the description of the video. So number one, it's I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have thou shalt not have any strange gods before me. And of course, this references um, polytheism, which is more than one God, which of course, in the beginning, they just couldn't believe God was so magnificent that he could do all of it. One single God? They had a God of water, God of sky, God of everything. Uh, but they finally went to monotheism, which is one God. Um, so it's the belief in one God. And this commandment forbids making golden calves, building temples, to Isis, worshiping statues of Caesar. Obviously, most of that is not our truth today, but we most certainly make life into idols. Um, some people do still feel that they get their energy from a pet rock or um, certainly a crystal, right? Um, other people believe, God, there's just so many things. I mean, we accidentally idolize, right? Idolize. Um, certainly, the famous. We idolize the famous, wishing we could be like them. Uh, if somebody is wearing gold, you know, we think that they're amazing. There's like so many ways. And, and I try and watch this all the time to make sure that I'm not paying more attention to something else in my life than to God. And that's including my husband. We're supposed to put God before our spouse, but then certainly our spouse and then our family. Um, but I try really hard because uh, sometimes my husband will be like, do you have to go to church? You're gone all the time. If I don't go to at least church, I am sunk. And then he's like, well, you're already super religious. You already pray your rosary. You pray for everybody. I do. But church is a community and receiving the body of Christ in communion. I can get it nowhere else. All right. Number two, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I'm super good about this. I used to say, I used to say his name all the time when I was young. And then finally, when I realized that God essentially stops the universe for the moment to say, how may I help you when you call his name? I stopped calling his name. And I'm really good about apologizing when I accidentally do. So it says the faithful are required to honor the name of God. It makes sense that if you're to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, then you're naturally to respect the name of God with equal passion and vigor. Number three, remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. So the Jewish celebration of the Sabbath or the Shabbat begins at sundown on Friday evening and lasts until sundown, sundown on Saturday. But the Western Christian Church, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox Christians tend to go to church on Sunday, treating it as the Lord's day instead of Saturday to honor the day that Christ rose from the dead. Like that's when it changed. Honor Apparently, my bird has an opinion on this. Okay, honor thy mother and father. This commandment obliges the faithful to show respect for their parents as children and adults. Children must obey their parents and adults must respect and see to the care of their parents when they become old and infirm. And it's a very difficult time for that. I was graced to care for my father to his last breath, but I know not everybody can, hence my ten brothers and sisters who did not care for my father. Um, it's really hard when you have bitter issues, but that goes back to loving one another as thyself, right? Um, so it's all grace. It can come in time. God is big and merciful. He knows our brokenness. But as much as possible, even if you can't be in the presence of your parents, you can still honor them by, um, you know, praying for them. 
Wow. <laughs> I guess the argument is done. Anyway, number five, thou shalt not kill. And um, the church makes a clarification of this because it, they really believe that the Hebrew translation would be better read as thou shalt not murder. Because some people do have to kill in self-defense and though it is not lovely and weighs on them for the rest of their lives, there's a difference between killing and murdering. So consider that. Number six, thou shalt not commit adultery. The sixth and ninth commandments honor human sexuality. This commandment forbids the actual physical act of having immoral sex, sexual activity, specifically adultery, which is sex with someone else's spouse or a spouse cheating on their partner. This commandment also includes fornication, which is sex between unmarried people, prostitution, pornography, homosexual activity, masturbation, group sex, rape, incest, pedophilia, bestiality, and necrophilia, which is sex with a dead person. You know what? I just, I, I know children don't come out of the womb with a desire for any of that, but sadly, in the ways that they're treated in their lifetime and through abuse and different things, they can go to that. And God is so big that he can forgive all acts at any time. And even when, when one falters, he can forgive them again. We just ask again and again. Okay, thou shalt not steal. Number seven, the seventh and tenth commandments focus on respecting and honoring the possessions of others. This commandment forbids the act of taking someone else's property. The church believes that this commandment also denounces cheating people of their money or property, depriving workers of their just wage, or not giving employers a full day's work for a full day's pay. Embezzlement, fraud, tax evasion, and vandalism are all considered extensions of violations of the seventh commandment. Thou shalt not steal. Number eight, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. The eighth commandment condemns lying. Because God is regarded as the author of all truth, the church believes that humans are obligated to honor the truth. The most obvious way to fulfill this commandment is not to lie. Intentionally deceive another by speaking a falsehood. I am definitely, like my hardest one is lying. And what I mean by lying is that I often will lie by omission. I just don't even bother to tell whatever it is. I, I just don't want to even feel like telling what it is. Or I, um, in my mind, simplify and decide that what's the big deal? It won't hurt them, that kind of thing. So usually when I'm in confession, <laughs> it's for grace to not lie on any level. Why lie? There are none. Lying is lying is lying, right? Okay, number nine. Thou shalt cover, shall not covet thy neighbor's wife. The ninth commandment forbids the intentional desire and longing for immoral sexuality. To sin in the heart, Jesus says, is to lust after a woman or man in your heart with the desire and will to have immoral sex with them. Just as human life is a gift from God and needs to be respected, defended, and protected, so too is human sexuality. Christians regard human sexuality as a divine gift, so it's considered sacred in the proper context, which is marriage. Number 10, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. The 10th commandment forbids the wanting to or taking someone else's property. Along with the seventh commandment, this commandment condemns theft and the feelings of envy, greed, or jealousy in reaction to what other people have. I'm so blessed that I never fret. I, I can say nearly never. I, it's just not true for me where I'm envious or long for something someone else has. Certainly not a material item. I may want the strength they have or, or you know, the discipline that they have. It might be something like that, but those are things that I can readily achieve, right? All right, so I said I would teach you how to remember these, and here we go. It's super good. Number one, literally the number one, and this is pointing upward to God. Number one, thou shalt have no gods before me, no idols, nobody. Number one, God is number one. Number two, it creates a V, as in the word vain. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. So the V is for vain. Number three was a little tricky, but in um, sign language, if you take your two fingers and turn them on their side and your thumb goes in the middle, this is a K. And so this is keep the Sabbath day holy. 
it's a little bit of a stretch, but it still works. Like every time you use something physical along with the mental and the verbal, your, your mind just gets it. So keep the Sabbath day holy. Let's go back. Number one, literally keeping God number one. No gods are idols. Number two, a V for vain, as in do not take the Lord's name in vain. Number three, turn it on its side and put your thumb here, a K for keep the Sabbath day holy. All right, number four, you put your fingers together at your head, and this is honor thy mother and father. Yes, sir. Honor thy mother and father. Number five. Number five is do not kill. <laughs> so it's like literally the choke motion. Do not kill. Number six, you literally take this finger and point to your ring finger. Whether you have a ring or not, it doesn't matter. But point to your ring finger for do not commit adultery. Do not commit adultery. All right, let's go back to number four. Number four, put those fingers together and honor thy mother and father. Number five, the chokehold. Do not kill. Number six, point to that ring finger. Do not commit adultery. Number seven is do not steal. And you literally just take this hand and steal these two items away. Do not steal. Number eight, you take these two fingers to your mouth and it's do not, oh, okay, why do I always do this one wrong? Please don't, hold on one second. <laughs> I know it's talking about others. I know it's shaming others. I know it's not telling the truth about somebody. Um, God, I just, I don't know. I, like I know in my heart, but I draw a blank. Oh, all right. So number eight. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Where you take it and say, did you hear about so-and-so? Thou shalt not bear false witness. All right. <laughs> Number nine. This is the wife, and you have snatched her up. Do not covet thy neighbor's wife. Do not covet thy neighbor's wife or husband or anything else. Here's your person in your prison. Do not covet them. And number 10 is grabbing all the goods. Do not covet any goods. Do not take from anyone. And again, um, we indicated that that would be greed, jealousy, whatever it is that you want. So really quickly from the top, I know you can do it. Test yourself. Number one, literally pointing up to God, keeping him number one, no idols, no gods before me. Number two, a V. Do not say the Lord's name in vain. And if you do, quickly apologize. He gets it. Number three, turning this on its side with your thumb, a K, for keep the Sabbath day holy. Number four, putting it together to honor thy mother and father. Number five, that clutch on the throat for do not commit do not kill. I was going to say commit murder. Do not kill. Number six, pointing to that ring finger for adultery. Number seven, do not steal. Grab these items and take them away. Number eight, up to your mouth. Do not <laughs> bear false witness. Thank you. Thank you. Do not bear false witness. Yes. Number nine, there's that little person being brought into your web. Do not covet thy neighbor's wife, husband, etc. And number 10, do not covet the goods. Do not covet the goods. What do you think? I think it's a really good one. I don't really know where it'll look, so I'm trying to look over here. I hope it looks like I'm looking at you. Um, anyway, such a good one. It was great for little kids, but it was great for me. Because I was like, yeah, I mean, I know them, but I never say them in order. Well, now I'll say them in order because I have those images in my head and I am fluent in sign language. So it does help me to see the word, uh, but now I'll do that. Okay, so yay for our Advent Random Acts of Kindness. And today was day 20 feed animals like birds, deers, etc. Oh, forgive me. No, that's right. Yeah, it was. Or what I modified it to be, which was spend time. Spend time with your animals. I spent time with my animals. When I got home, I let those little kids in and they drowned me in love. So as usual, which is so God, the gift was on me, right? They dug it too, but the gift was on me. Um, so I certainly spent time with my pets, which I recommended. Tomorrow is donate unwanted clothes to charity. And when I go back through the month, I know we had donated unwanted books to charity. 
Um, you know, we've certainly done many gracious acts, but you may very well, oh, we said donate a Christmas present at one point, and finally donate unwanted clothes to charity. You may have stuff still sitting around. Most importantly, you might have some unused jackets, whether it's a windbreaker, um, a hoodie, an actual jacket, even if a button's missing on it, it means a lot to people who are cold. You may very well. I know places like Burlington Coat Factory actually give a discount. You know, they give you like a 10% discount or something if you donate. But it's such an incredible time of year. And it's going to apparently be a very cold winter by California standards. <laughs> I'm not going to compare, okay, to places buried in 50 feet of snow. But I'm just saying for us, um, it's cold. And I have some extra things. My, you can only wear so many jackets a day, right? And many of mine are way too big. I'm happy to report. So I need the grace to donate those. And that's for tomorrow. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed learning this and reviewing with me. You know, the Ten Commandments aren't any form of punishment and God's not limiting us in any way. It is all a blessing. He only gives us guidelines to keep us safe from harm and bless ourselves. I know that to be true. So like if you like, join us if you haven't, subscribe. And until we talk again, best of all, know that you're blessed.